Assalamu alaikum guys, I am Dr. Khan. I have recently passed my JCAT exam. I appeared in JCAT in March 2024. I hope you guys already know that JCAT is very difficult exam. Only 10 to 20% candidates manage to pass this exam. And of those who pass this exam, majority gets an average score. It is very difficult to get a good competitive score in the exam. The prime reason for this is its vast syllabus, which we will be discussing in a minute. Despite all the technical difficulties, Alhamdulillah, I managed to get a score of 202. The purpose of making this video is to share my JCAT experience with you guys so that it can help you in your JCAT journey. Contents of this video include overview of JCAT exam, marks distribution of various subjects, my preparation strategy and list of high yield topics and in the end I will tell you guys how can you ace this exam with minimum time and minimum effort. This video is going to be very important for you guys. So make sure to watch it till the end so that you don't miss any of the important points. So before wasting any time, let's jump into this. JCAT is an entrance exam for MD, MS and MDS program in various public hospitals and institutions of Punjab. JCAT is conducted twice a year. Examination fee is 6,000 rupees. The paper comprises 125 MCQs, each of which carry two marks. You are given three hours to attempt all these MCQs. In order to pass this exam, you need to get a score of 150 out of total 250. Please note, JCAT result is valid for three years only. Marks distribution of JCAT is as following. From marks distribution, you can see that it has a huge syllabus. Basically, it includes almost all the topics that we studied from our first year to final year. Practically, it is very difficult to revise all those subjects. So it is very important that you should know how to study SMART. Before diving into this, let me make you guys clear about one thing, especially those who do not have a plan to sit in Plan 1. The thing is, this video is for everyone. Please bear with me till the end and you guys will also find what you are looking for in this video. So before JCAT exam, I had Plan 1 exam on 15th Feb. And before 15th Feb, I just prepared for my Plan 1 and I couldn't study for JCAT. So after my PLAB 1, I had around 15 days for JCAT preparation. And there was a plenty of syllabus for me to cover in those 15 days. I knew that it was not possible for me to do all the syllabus. So I would have to study smart. For medicine and pathology, I just hope that, inshallah, my background knowledge from PLAB1 and MRCP1 should be enough. Additionally, there is a small portion of gyne ops, I and ENT in PLAB1. But I wasn't sure whether it would be enough because I could clearly remember that previously, many of my class fellows who had appeared in JCAT exam after PLAB1, they were barely able to pass JCAT exam with marks somewhere in 150. But I wanted to get a good competitive score. So I knew that I would have to do much more. But the problem was, how could I do all the syllabus in those 15 days? I was very confused from where to start and what to start. Initially, I thought of doing first aid as much as I could. But soon I realized that it was not a smart move. I thought that it would be better if I just do the high yield topics of all the subjects. But the problem was, how could I know that 
this topic is high yield for the exam. So I decided that I would do past papers and along with that I would do the frequently tested topics from the textbooks. I had an option of using gateway to MDMS for that but I decided to do this in very unusual way. I'm sure you guys already know that how exam keys are made. Someone makes a post on Facebook and asks people to comment MCQs that were asked in the exam. These comments are then compiled into final key. I am sorry to say that, but I have never trusted these compiled keys. The reason is that because I have observed that there are usually plenty of mistakes in those keys. So basically what I did was I went to all such posts that were available on Facebook from 2017 to 2023. I read all the comments on such posts and made my own keys after verifying them against standard textbooks. Additionally, I read the frequently tested topics from the textbooks and added the important points which I thought could be asked in the exam into my keys. So this way, after going through all the available posts on Facebook, I was able to make comprehensive notes of around 40 to 50 pages. Additionally, I took pictures of some high yield topics which I couldn't summarize, but I did revise these topics at the end. With the help of these notes, Alhamdulillah, I was able to get around 15 to 20 difficult MCQs correct. Please keep in mind, I am only talking about difficult MCQs. Those 15 to 20 MCQs, which I wouldn't have get correct otherwise. And I'm sure any of you who have appeared in the JCAT exam would agree that these 30 to 40 marks are usually the difference maker and can have a huge impact on your final merit. So now what I would recommend to you is to do medicine from whatever book you studied in your final year. For surgery, do GIT, thyroid and breast from Broker. Do gynae and ops from 10 teachers. And along with that, for the remaining topics, you can do my notes. Please keep in mind, I am not stopping you from using other resources. Basically, what I am telling you is that this is the minimum you should do in order to get a good competitive score in the exam. If you want to do more, you should do it. You can do I from Jogi, ENT from Dhingra, Anatomy from KLM, and so on. The more you study, the more the chances that you will get a higher score. This is for those candidates who believe just like me that they wouldn't be able to revise all the syllabus. I know all of you guys have a one question in mind right now. How to get my notes? Well, my notes are freely available in PDF form with the name J Cat Pulse by Dr. Asadullah Khan. If you want to get these, please contact me at this email address. One thing which I must mention here, the thing is, I tried my level best to make sure that these notes are 100% accurate. But I am also a human being and there can be mistakes in these notes. So please don't mind correcting these if you find any mistake. The answer is absolutely not. The reason behind is that in JCAT Pulse, I try to include the high yield points from all the subjects except medicine. That's why I told you that you should do medicine from whatever book you studied in your final year. So this is it guys, I hope this video is helpful and cleared many of your questions. If you still have any queries, please ask me in the comment section below. And if you are new to this channel, 
do subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my useful medicine related video. Thank you so much for watching this video and best wishes for your exam.